Recently I was checking in with some friends of mine who work at a game store and they'd gotten some bootleg versions of Pokemon Blue, Yellow, and Gold versions traded in. And being that they are a legitimate business and don't want to be selling bootleg products, I took them off their hands. But when I tried these games, I noticed something very interesting. These were bootlegs from China. And now seeing the wide variety of bootleg stuff that comes from China, that might not be surprising for some. But I mean the exact type of Chinese bootlegs these were. These were just the ROMs of Pokemon Blue, Yellow, and Gold versions put onto Game Boy cartridges and translated into Chinese. And these were from back in the day. And these existed for a reason. Because there was never any official Chinese version of Pokemon Blue, Yellow, or Gold versions, or really any Pokemon games up to the 7th generation released in mainland China. These were bootlegs not made to dupe someone or whatnot, but bootlegs that were potentially made to serve a market that wasn't being served through official channels. So that got me digging. Today on Master Trainer, we're going over a brief history of the Pokemon series in China. China has had a very odd history with video games. The large communist country for decades was wary of foreign influences, and it was difficult for foreign game companies to get their products there. But an industry did begin to form. This was an industry, of course, based off bootlegging. The most common of these systems were known as Famiclones, and were cheap knockoffs of the Nintendo Famicom, or NES as it was known overseas. Now that's not to say that there wasn't any interest in getting legitimate game consoles, it was just very difficult, if not impossible, to do so. So these Famicoms were cheap and unlicensed, but they were a staple of 90s gaming in China. Even Jackie Chan officially endorsed one of these, which was bundled in a case similar to a 1980s microcomputer. However, Famiclones weren't the only hardware clones that populated the gaming market in mainland China back in the 90s. There were clones of other systems such as the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive if you prefer, and Nintendo Game Boy as well, and some of these even made their way to other Asian countries often forgotten by gaming companies, such as Vietnam. In the Chinese-speaking countries of Taiwan and Hong Kong, however, it was a different story. While gaming companies didn't target them directly, due to them being much more open as far as business goes, they saw many games and consoles be officially released there in some capacity, even if they were often just imported Japanese or American products. This included the Pokemon series, which has existed officially in some form in those Chinese-speaking regions for some time, more or less now in the same state as in a region such as in the US or Japan. Back to mainland China, the Pokemon series made an entry there early on as well, all the way back in 1998 with the introduction of a Mandarin dub of the original Pokemon anime series. Games were expected to follow within the next couple of years as well, but then, in 2000, those plans had to be put to a halt. The Chinese government decided that they would outright ban console gaming, claiming that console games would negatively affect the development of children. This ban would remain in place until 2015. But there were a few workarounds for those in China who wanted to get a gaming fix. Game systems with games built into them were exempt from the rule, allowing Nintendo to release their Chinese exclusive IQ player, which was a Nintendo 64 that was housed in an Xbox-like controller that could download new games from kiosks around the country, though as far as I know none of the N64 Pokemon games made it onto this service. And of course, there was the bootleg market. While many Pokemon games were just knockoffs, cheap imitations of the real thing, there were some cartridges released such as these bootleg versions of Pokemon Yellow, Blue, and Gold versions, which merely just translated the Japanese versions of the games into some form of simplified Chinese. Some of these too would receive further tweaks and translations, and receive bootleg releases in areas such as Cambodia or Vietnam. These versions of the game, due to being based off the Japanese games, could potentially trade and battle of those official releases, though this came with the chance of potentially corrupting data in the process, thanks to the original releases not being made with Chinese letters in mind. These games weren't legitimate, the translations weren't perfect, but they were Game Boy games, and they were better than nothing. But the Pokemon series did have some official presence during this time. The first few seasons of the Pokemon anime aired, and the manga series and the trading card game were available, even if the latter of those never went much past the initial base set. Oddly though, the Pokemon anime series was put in an abrupt hiatus in 2008 for unknown reasons, midway through their airing of the advanced generation anime. 
It then unexpectedly returned in 2011, this time starting off with a Mandarin dub of the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl anime series. Afterwards, the anime stopped having new episodes premiere on Chinese TV anyways, though the entire Taiwanese dubs of the Black and White and X and Y anime series were put up online for legal streaming throughout 2013 by Chinese streaming company Aiki. As of 2019, Aiki is doing the same thing with the Sun and Moon anime series. Until 2015, games, including Pokemon games, only continued to be released in China as either bootlegs or as dubiously legal and often expensive imports. It didn't seem like there was any chance for change in the Chinese game industry to allow for console games anytime soon. But then, unexpectedly in 2015, the video game ban was lifted by the Chinese government. Though the industry was still heavily monitored by the communist government, video game consoles were finally allowed to be sold in China, and the industry exploded. China quickly became the largest video game market in the world, with its player base far surpassing that of even the US. And thus, in 2016, the first official Pokemon game releases occurred in mainland China. Pokemon Sun and Moon, for the Nintendo 3DS. As far as I can tell, they were quite successful, but have been the only official Pokemon games released so far. There are a few reasons likely as to why. In 2018, the Chinese government placed a freeze on approving new games after some associated with the Communist Party raised complaints about the content of the hit title Monster Hunter World. This freeze resulted in said game being pulled from Chinese stores. And of course, there's also the fact that releasing games and consoles in China is still a very lengthy process, with Nintendo not even being able to lay out any solid plans to release the Nintendo Switch there until early 2019. But the Pokemon series, whether in official or bootleg forms, has managed to gain quite a following in China. And it makes me wonder, how many lifelong Pokemon fans got their start by playing a fake game on a knockoff Game Boy or Famiclone and didn't even realize that what they were playing wasn't the real thing? Thanks for watching, Master Trainer.